All right, in this video, I'm going to do two fundamental problems for you um, and remind you that you need to go and look at those example problems, okay? We, whoa, we talked about why that was so important. Um, so here we've got this strange sort of configuration where there's two plates and they're butted up next to each other and they got these pulleys and anyway you can kind of see it's it's weird and again this isn't <laughs> i don't know why you'd build something i may i who knows anyway this is the situation that we have and it's it's our job to figure out um what's the force in between the plates okay what's the force in between the plates so the way to think about that is a is resting on b which means it's going to feel some force from that and that's a normal force we'll classify that as a normal force okay so b feels a normal force from a so it feels what's pushing down on that but at the same time a feels a normal force from b from below okay and what they each feel from the other one is is the same uh amount it's the same magnitude okay so of course that's newton's third law all right so what i've done is i've gone ahead and made separate drawings for plate a and plate b so what we can start to do is go ahead and put our forces on there so let me zoom in a little bit here okay so i've got some tension here and here and because because this thing is symmetric left and right um the center of mass is exactly in the center and that means what each pulley has to do is the same thing so if if we wanted to think about how much this is pulling up and how much this is pulling up they're the same amount because because it's symmetric the center of mass is right in between them okay what that means is that the tension in my pulleys is the same okay now you don't want to just automatically assume that you need to convince yourself that that's that's correct okay uh, like i did just now it's like oh okay all right that's cool all right now that we've got that i know that i'm going to have some of that tension over here and we're going to have some of that tension over here now a has a certain weight Okay, I think it's um, it's hundred pounds or something. I don't know. Let's we'll just call. I'm just going to call it W A, like that. And then A is going to feel the force, a force from B. So it feels B pushing on it from below. So that's an upward force. We'll call that N. All right. And so if we want to write our algebraic relationship then i've got two t's up i've got the normal force up and i've got the weight down and so there's my equilibrium condition for plate a okay now we'll do the same thing with plate b here externally we've got this guy and this guy all right and there's this it's the same tension that we had for plate A, okay, so we'll put that over here, tension, tension, and then of course we've got the weight of B, like this, and then the normal force from A, okay, so here's B, it feels A pushing down on it, okay, now it won't be the full weight of a it's going to be something less we don't know how much less it's going to be but we know it can't be the full weight because there's the tension pulling up on a so we just put in over here just like that okay and then we can write our algebraic equation our our relationship here we're going to have 2 t minus n minus wb is equal to zero okay all right pretty good let's back off let's see what we got what are the things that we don't know what we don't know is t and n 
t and n. Look at that. I've got two equations and two unknowns. I'm ready to go. Now, we don't have to know tension in this particular problem because it only asks for the normal force. All right, that's all it asks for. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say that 2t is wa minus n. And over here, I'm going to say that 2t is n plus wb. Okay, I can set those equal to each other. And then we're going to have wa minus n is n plus wb. Okay, then we just do a little bit of algebra, and what we're going to discover is that it's going to be a half of WA minus WB. Okay, so it's half the difference in the weight, which is a kind of a cool result. All right, um, we can see uh, in the numbers that it gives us. Let me pull that down just a little bit. Okay. Uh, plate A is 100 pounds and plate B is only 30 pounds. Uh, so A is the heavier one, which makes sense. All right, it's, it's resting down on there. I mean, if it makes sense because if B was the heavier one, you, you could sort of imagine in your mind's eye, you'd be like, you'd set it up and the thing would go, woo! <laughs> okay, um, so A has to be the heavier ones, which gives us a positive number for for the normal force n, all right? If for some reason b was the heavier one, it, it would want to come apart, and that would mean we'd need something to hold it together, uh, okay? And that means that we got all of our normal, we would have a negative number and all of our normal forces would be backwards, and they'd be backwards because we actually need a, some string or a spring or something to keep them from flying apart. But since a is heavier, it all works out just fine, okay? Now, let's look at one more while we're here. Okay, and move my thing a little bit. Let's take a look at it. Okay, so we have a six kilogram force on a hook. Um, the hook can move around, all right? And so we gotta figure out two things here. And one of the things we have to figure out is where does this hook go, all right? This hook can only be in exactly one place. If it's a little bit too much one way or the other, the whole thing, because it's all suspended by pulleys, right, and ropes, if it's a little too far one way or the other, the whole thing's going to tilt, and, and then we got a mess, okay? So we have to figure out where to put the hook, and then we have to figure out how much we have to pull on P, or, all right? So uh, I've drawn the pulley C for us there, and it's going to have, whoa, here's P, and P's on the other side there, and we're going to have some other force here. All right, so this is what I'm calling T, <clears throat> and here's my P's here and here, and my rope with the tension T goes up and around and comes down. So I've got a tension T up over here on this side as well. Okay. But the, the thing we need to note right now is how T is equal to 2P. All right. So whatever we find for P, we get, we, we get twice out of that for T. Okay. All right. Now let's think about the bar. Um, so the bar itself has T up there at A, which I drew already, and then it's got a P up right here, and we're neglecting the weight, so we don't have to worry about that, and so then we just have the, the 6 to deal with right here, okay? And I've drawn that already, so we have that here, and let me put things in, so we had tension on this side. We have P over here, just like that. Okay, and so we can write down one relationship for this thing already. If we look at our vertical information, 
So I've got t plus p minus 6 is equal to 0. But we've already learned from above that t is actually 2p. And so p is actually 2. Okay. <clears throat> Hooray! Well, that's half the stuff we need to know. The other half, uh, the other piece we need to know is what's the value for x. Okay, so where do we put the hook? Where does the hook need to go? And we've already used, uh, we've burned up our, our equation for the vertical forces information. Um, the horizontal forces don't come into play here at all. But that's, and so we, uh, we move to moments, all right? And so I think the way to go about this is put a moment right here at A. And then what we're going to do is we'll sum the moments at A, set that equal to zero. Okay. All right. So I've got six. The six is down and it's located at X. Okay. And then P. Oh, where's P located? Because I know I'm going to need something P. It's going to be positive and that's going to be zero. But how far how far out there is it? Mm -hmm. Well, let's come up and take a look. Hmm, interesting. Okay, so the P is lined up right there. Okay, so I know it's 0.9 over to this guy, but the T is off by one pulley radius value okay so that means actually the distance across here is one. Oh, okay well they could have just told us that right so getting back to my equation then it's just one <laughs> is that guy right there okay and so that tells us then that x is going to be p over 6 okay which is 2 over 6 so 1 third uh, or 0.3333 etc okay there we go so let's back up get a good look at that thing there okay in case you want to get a screenshot or something all right there we go um pulleys are pretty straightforward all right, um, one more time, look at all those examples. They're going to help you out. Time spent looking at the examples uh, is going to be time saved working your problems. Okay, there we go.